You know, for me, what's going on with Timothy Lindgren? You know, according to his agent yesterday in the athletic, Josh Cloak, the Leafs have engaged in very little talk with Lindgren's camp. And that could be, you know, is, it, is he going to head to arbitration or what do you, what are you thinking here, Rosie? Uh, I, I honestly just think he's kind of on the back burner of their minds right now. They know they got to get him done, but being a restricted free agent. So what does that mean? I think they got till June 30th to qualify him. That just means he's going to, you know, make what he makes now with a 10% raise. Um, if that doesn't happen by June, June 30th, then I think the player has until July 5th to file arbitration. And then on the 6th, the team can file arbitration, which happens down the road kind of at the end of July where, you know, you go to an arbitrator, you're in a boardroom, you walk into the room and your agent is going to tell the arbitrator everything unbelievable about his client, going to show highlight clips, packages, show numbers, show comparables, show why this guy needs a big raise and a big contract. Adversely, in comes the general manager and the cap crunchers and everyone for the team, and they're going to say why this guy isn't worth shit. And they're going to bring in highlight reels or low light reels they're going to have comparables of bad players they're going to show mistakes and and bad numbers it's an ugly thing i haven't been through it but i've talked to guys that have and they said it's the biggest pump up in the world by the biggest bring down in the world and it's a crazy set of emotions you leave the arbitrator takes all the information and comes up with what he thinks is fair um i don't think they're going to go there i just really think that the leafs want to figure out and get an an understanding of what the, what's going to happen with their back end. I think they're going to go shopping for some big boys. And right now to sign Till, Timothy Lilligren right now, we're going to sign you like, why do that when you don't know where everything's going to shake up and where he falls. So I think they're just biding their time to figure out if they can get a, a semblance of what their back end looks like, who they have their, their money on, who they can get, who's having, you know, they're going to be, you know, putting feelers out there, figuring out where everybody's at in free agency. And I think they want to figure out where they sit before they address Timothy Lilligren. Yeah, I think that's a good way to go about it, right? Especially with free agency coming, you know, what chips are going to be in play, where are they at? And, you know, for me, he's a right shot defenseman, right? Which is hard to come by. You know, he's exactly. had some good games. He's had some growing pains. But at the same time, I think reassessing where this team is at. And again, I've been through, I haven't been personally through arbitration, but I played with Linus Allmark who went through it and uh, he actually kind of filled me in on the process. And I, he told me I took a beating during, for, during arbitration. They ripped me apart as they were ripping him apart and comparables. And he was nice enough to share that with me. So that was really good for my confidence. And, uh, but that's the, but that's the way it works right there. You know, it, it's a business at the end of the day and they're going to try to pinch guys for money and they're going to try to build this team. I also think with Lilgren and the way the playoffs have played out, the Leafs are going to be assessing what's going on because we know this is a copycat league. And you know right now every general manager is sitting at home watching this Florida Panthers team, how they're constructed with, with only three draft picks on their team, right? Like they've traded away big chips to get guys. But I, I feel like for the Leafs, this is a point where, you know, maybe we move in some, move out some of these homegrown guys. So this could be a potential where they keep them, they trade them. You know, there's a lot that can go on with Lilgren here, Rosie. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Like you say, it's not like he's a blue chip guy. What's he making? 1.3 this year. Um, it's it's not make or break with him. I mean, he has the potential to be, you know, that third pairing guy and to be kind of steady and chip in a little bit and just just kind of be that filler guy that can he can continue to get better and progress. He's only 25 years old at, you know, the, the position of defense. I've always thought you, and it's always been said, you don't really – fully develop in the NHL as a defenseman until about 26, 27 years old. It's a difficult position. Um, it's ever changing. It's, it's takes a while to get into it. So it's not like this guy's ceiling has been reached for sure. That's not to say he's going to explode and be this phenom by any means, but I mean, there's reason to think he's, he's getting better and having that right-handed shot, which the Leafs have desperately needed, um, especially this season is, you know, to, to unload them or to, to not get something done you know, you're just going to go and try to fill that void again. So we'll see what happens. But initially, I just think that if they go and get two high-end defensemen, July 1, 2, 3, that makes a difference on what they're doing with Lilligren. I think they just want to get a better semblance of what's going on in that department before they address Lilligren. But I have a feeling they're going to get them done and, and you know, just qualify them and, and move on with their uh, with their business. Or, you know, sometime, I don't know if that, it's kind of weird that you got to qualify them by the 30th, but then there's five days in between there. I feel like that five-day in-between period, something could get done. 
Yeah. And, and I, I kind of feel that way too. I think steady as it goes, right? Like, I don't think you want to make a roster decision right now. Um, you know, worst cases you're qualifying for the 10%. And I think you're going to steal there, which I don't think will happen. Obviously his camp's going to want more. And there's always that argument side of it, but I think moving forward, he's still a 25 year old defenseman. And, and again, there's not many guys that can compete at that level and be that good. It, it takes a little bit of time and some nurturing, right? Like you get it, right? You were up front, but like how much more experience did you gain as you played just throughout the years, right? And I, I think he's only going to get better. Yeah, and I mean, I have a soft spot for defensemen. I, I played defense. I was drafted as a defenseman. My first year pro were defense, and it's a difficult position. Um, it's ever evolving with the way the game's played and the rules and the way it's the way it's called and the culture of hockey. So it it is difficult and i've always thought you know you don't hit your stride until about where timothy lilligren is right now it'll be interesting to see how far apart they are like if if his camp wants like how much of a boost and how much reason do they have to say i deserve a whole lot more i guess we'll see but i mean if they're far apart then then arbitration could be uh could be in the midst or else or else some kind of a deal comes through you know you could see the signing of couple of guys or some movement and that's included in a package deal with a trade that includes Lilligren. I mean sky's the limit it's going to be an exciting time of year I think especially this year with all the cap room that the Maple Leafs have and what they're able to do in free agency make sure to check out more of our content right here on the Leafs Nation YouTube page we got long form interviews we got clips we got epic rants by Jay Rozo we simply have it all and don't forget you can find out much more at the thanks so much for watching